Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodson, and in today's Adobe Illustrator tutorial, we're going to take a look at mm, taking your own handwriting and converting it to a font. No matter how complex, how simple, uh, whatever it is you're doing, you can take your handwriting, or maybe you have a friend who has really cool handwriting, convert it to a font in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to talk about it right here in this tutorial. Now, this tutorial is sponsored by FontSelf. It is the extension that we're going to be using that allows you to create fonts. Uh, it's an inexpensive extension. You can check it out. There's a link in the bio. You can check it out. Uh, I'm so happy that they're sponsoring this video today because I'd never used it. And now I've been using FontSelf for about six months, I want to say. And it's so cool. It's amazing. You can just tell a client, let's make this a font. Let's make that a font. You can deliver all sorts of uh, sort of icon packages as fonts. There's so much you can do uh, with this. It's a really, really cool thing. But we're going to talk about the basics, taking your handwriting, making a font out of it, and the process that that entails. So it begins with just sitting down and drawing out fonts and drawing out letters, big letters, small letters, all sorts of different things. They can be scripty. They can be sharp and angled. They can be all over the place. I like to use brush pens. I like to use foam markers. Uh, you can, of course, use a pencil and just sketch out a more detailed font, script, whatever you want. Uh, a lot of fun, but it is nice and easy if you do use a thick marker for your font because when we convert it to a vector a shape later, it's just going to make things nice and easy for us. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a full set of upper and lowercase letters. Once you find some stuff you like, open up a couple windows or move your uh, paper near some windows and take a couple pictures with your phone or your camera and transfer it over to your computer via AirDrop, Dropbox, email, Bluetooth, whatever you, whatever your preferred means of transferring images from one electronic device to another is and get those images into Photoshop. And that's where this tutorial now kicks off. That's right. It begins in Photoshop where we'll do some simple things like rotating the image and taking it over into camera raw and straightening it out and we also do some cropping just to clean things up and once we've got it cropped down the way we like we go ahead and add a black and white adjustment layer just adjust it a little bit I've got blue letters, so we're going to try to make the letters dark, the papers light. But to further accentuate this, we're also going to add a levels adjustment. Just pump up those blacks, pump up the whites. Ideally, we want solid white and solid black. That's really, uh, you're, you're going in the direction you want when you got solid white and solid black. And then we flatten the image, layer flatten image, and we save this out as a JPEG. And I'll go ahead and recreate that process here with these numbers, and we'll jump right into Illustrator. And once we get to Illustrator, we first jump out to our finder. We grab both of those JPEGs we just saved drag them both into Adobe Illustrator and get ready to create our shapes. Now the process, it's pretty simple. I'm going to work with just one of these images at a time. So I'll drag my letters out. I got my numbers and stuff over here. Let's begin with the letters. We select the letters and then we go to our properties panel and we say, hey, look, image trace. And I'm going to go with the black, white logo preset. Illustrator is going to say, hey, look, it's a huge image. You sure you want to continue? Absolutely, I do. And there we have it. It is now traced. We want to go ahead and hit expand to convert it or just to sort of un wrap it and then ungroup to unwrap it even more. Now we have all the white stuff that we want to get rid of. This is easy. Let's collapse our control or toolbox there. Let's grab the magic wand tool and just click on the white. It's going to select all the white stuff and delete it. There we go. We're left with our letters as vector shapes. Wonderful. And we'll repeat the process real quick for the second uh, image here. Okay, so now that we have all this stuff, we'll select it all. We'll make it all a little bit smaller. Just hold shift to constrain proportions. And what we're going to do is we need to move all of this onto a baseline. So font self knows or the font self extension knows. All right, this is kind of how short letters are. This is where the, the sort of the ground plane is, I guess. That's the best way to think about it. So let's go view and turn rulers on. Rulers show rulers. And we're going to drag out a guide and just place it kind of anywhere. We'll drag out a second guide and place it kind of anywhere. And we'll drag our letters now between these guides. It doesn't matter if they move off of our stage. Uh, we're just going to drag the letters down and put them on the baseline. And then I'm going to hold down shift and I'll stretch them out. Actually, since these are about this size, what I'll do instead is I'll select that top guide right over here in the layers panel. I'll drag it to the trash can. See, we just have one guide now and we'll drag out a fresh guide and put it kind of at the top of the A because all of our letters are probably about this size and this way we're not resizing every single letter. So we'll come through here, letters that need to be resized like the C, hold down shift and just drag it up and I'm going to speed through the rest of this process very quickly lining up all of my uppercase letters. All right, there we are. We've got the capital letters all lined up and about the size that we want them to be. Now comes the magic. We go window, we choose extensions, and here's the font self maker. And here in this rather large panel, 
we can select all of our letters. I'm going to zoom out a little bit further here just so I can see all of them. I'm just going to select the ones here on the baseline. I'm going to drag it over the panel. And right now it's telling me there are 27 objects selected. So I will need to select 26 to make an entire uppercase alphabet. So what this means is there's some, this little shape here or something, something in there is not quite right. So let's just select that little piece. It looks like it's a little fragment hanging under the T and uh, we can just delete it. All right, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. You may need to clean up your fonts a little bit, but you know, this looks like this will work now. This should be 26 and you can see sure enough, 26 letters are selected. We're going to drop it right on the uppercase alphabet. It's going to import it into font self. Look at how easy this is. Boom. They're all our letters. This capital A is going to be associated with whenever somebody types capital A. Now you can go through here and you can see the baseline. So the E, maybe we need to move it down a little bit. So you can move it down a little bit. Same thing with the D. Maybe we need to move it down a little bit. Do you need a little bit more space to one side or the other of your letters? You can do that here on a letter by letter basis. We can bump up the F. We can maybe shift the G over a little bit. Maybe give it a little, just a tiny bit of space before and close it up on the front side. All sorts of things you can do here with this. And then you can test and say, um, uh, here is, well, we need to go all uppercase of course here is my font exclamation point we haven't done the exclamation point yet though so we can't do that here's my font and there's your font with your handwriting okay so we've got the uppercase letters and we, we let's say we go through and we tweak and adjust them and everything's great what about the lowercase well let's close font self we're going to do largely the same thing here but what i like to do is select all my uppercase letters all right so i'm going to select them all i'm going to group them command or control g and i'm just going to hide that group so let me find it here in my layers panel right there and we're going to hide that. And then what we do is select all the lowercase letters and we're going to line all of them up. But we want them to be a different size. So I'm going to I'm going to size them differently here on the artboard. What I like to do is drag out another guide that's maybe just more than halfway to the top of those those guides that were used for our large letters. I'm going to bring all my lowercase letters down here. I'll also just take a quick peek at them here in my panel. And what I'll probably do is take like the I, make sure that's grouped together, command or control G, and also the J, command or control G. And then we take these letters and we do the same thing. I'm going to speed through the process here. We just take them, we align them with the baseline. But what we do is make them go up to that second that or that middle line. And the next step, of course, is going back to that font self font maker window. And we select all the lowercase letters, drag them right in. And there we have it. Again, you can adjust your baseline. See, we have a warning here, and that's because the G is dropping down too low. So what we can do is either edit the G out here, or we could physically move it up above the baseline or move it further up the baseline. But you want to be careful that it, it still needs to look right in context with the other letters. So probably what I would do is go and edit the G out here, delete this one so you can hit the little trash can, and just drag the lowercase G back in. But for the sake of time, we're not going to do that. The same here with the P and the Q. We'll just drag them upward a little bit just for the sake of time here. And uh, also the Y. The Y is actually pretty long, so we'll keep dragging it up. And you can see it's going to look real funky in there just because it's not the right size. But this is the joy of creating fonts, or some would say the frustration of creating them, is all the tweaking and adjusting to get that perfect font. Then, of course, you could drag all of your numbers and different symbols and things in. But let's go ahead and create this font and, and make it something we can use. So we have a few different options. First and foremost, we can scale all the letters up. Let's say we're trying to match something or make the, the letters bigger or smaller for this or that reason or purpose. Uh, we can do that. We can adjust the letter spacing and line spacing. We'll get back to that later. We still have a warning here. You can see it's telling us the lowercase j is too low as well. So we'll just adjust that real quick. There we go, something like that. Uh, but when we're ready to, to go ahead and use this, we have a couple options. We can use the install button, which will install it, as you can see, for Illustrator only. This has its merits. I'm going to show you why in a second. Or we can save it out as a proper font, an open type font that you can install in your system or share with your friends or whatever. Um, this obviously is great because then I could take this font. I could use it wherever I want. You can even convert it to a web font. Uh, there's a, a ton of cool stuff you can do with font self. Let's do the install this font right here in Illustrator first. So let's go ahead and install it. And I'm going to name it, uh, let's call it AAA lettering or something like that. Lettering. Okay. All right. It's installed here in Illustrator. So check this out. Uh, I'm going to pop out to my hard drive and grab this PDF here, which is this just a letter home from a soldier in World War One, And I'm just going to copy this text, something like so, and uh, close out Acrobat. Back here in Illustrator, I'm going to close my font self panel again, and we're going to grab our text tool, and I'm going to drag out a, a type field, maybe right over here. 
and I'm going to paste this text in, right? You can see it's tiny because we've dragged out a massive text field. So let's maybe adjust that text field, make it a bit smaller. And let's drag our type here onto our document. I'm going to group up the small fonts and just move them out of here, move them out of the way for the time being. And let's zoom in and take a look at what we've got. First off, we're going to go ahead and hide our rulers and we're going to clear our guides. All right, so we've got our text here. We're going to go window, type, character to open up our type panel or really I should say character panel. And uh, we're gonna first of all make this much bigger. So let's go like maybe 72 points. And you can see the text is quite large now. So we're going to just make it nice and big, something like so. And here we have uh, we have what we're going to convert to our font. Let's actually make it a little smaller here so we can really see what's going on. And then I'm gonna open up here and I'm gonna look for my AAA lettering. So there it is right there, AAA lettering, boom. And now you can see we've got the funky Y, right? That needs to be adjusted. And uh, all of this, all this text is looking the way we want it to look. Now, a few things, maybe we're looking at it and saying, uh, but my handwriting, I write the letters a lot more, uh, much more closely together. Everything's just a little more condensed when I write. So how do we adjust that? Well, watch this. We go window, extensions, font self. Now this is the advantage to just installing for use in Illustrator. I can come in here and say, uh, look, the letter spacing, we just have to close it up quite a bit. So we're gonna close it up a bunch and then we'll come up here and hit install. It's going to do that. We come out here and watch our document and there you go, it automatically updates and all the text is now tighter. So that's a big advantage. If you if you apply it to a body of text here in Illustrator, you could say, oh, we really need to adjust that lowercase y, it looks awful. And you can do it, re-import the lowercase y into font self, rebuild that lowercase y character, bing, you're done, great. We could add our numbers, our question mark, our exclamation point, our periods. See, we're just using a standard period now instead of our handwritten period. All kinds of things like that. We can adjust and tweak all we like. Now, if you did want to take it out and use it somewhere else, of course, extensions, font, self, we've done this. We'll go ahead and save it. I'm going to save it right here to my desktop as AAA lettering, and it's going to be on our desktop. So here, if I pop out to my desktop, there it is, .otf. And if I bump over to my font book, I can drag it here into font book and install it. You can do this with the Windows font folder. If I come up here to AAA lettering, there it is. We're missing a bunch of glyphs and letters and things. No worries there. And if we were to jump over into Photoshop at this point, you can see here is the stuff we were working on. Let's go to font tester. Let's grab our text tool, drag out a type field here, paste some letters into here, commit the change. And I have a different hand lettered font going on, but let's go with AAA lettering. And there we go. We've got the same font here in Photoshop messed up lowercase y notwithstanding. Heading back to Illustrator, one little tip that I do want to leave you with is you don't need to create a font totally from scratch. You can use an existing font, type out all the letters, all the numbers, everything you want, then you would create outlines, so you would convert that font to outlines, and then customize each letter the way you think it needs to be customized. Maybe you want to create a themed font for an event or uh, whatever it is, a birthday party, something you're, you're doing, and then you convert all of those new letters to fonts and save them. And the great thing about creating these fonts in Illustrator, there is a Photoshop extension as well where you can create bitmap fonts, but when you create vector fonts, you can scale them up as big or as small as you want. It's super duper powerful and there's so much the font self does that we didn't even touch in this video. But for right now, this is how you create your own handwritten, hand lettered font in Adobe Illustrator. So there you have it folks, a tutorial brought to us by our friends at FontSelf. Again, check out the link down in the bio, really, really cool stuff. If you did enjoy this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any other Illustrator tutorials. And speaking of other Illustrator tutorials, check out this Illustrator tutorial on the screen right now. It's one of a bunch of Illustrator tutorials that I've got here on the channel, something you might like. You can use the link right there, that little thumbnail on the screen, and go check it out. And just a reminder that I love all the people, but especially I love people like you that stick around and watch this video all the way to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.